probably not what you want to hear. You probably want to hear all this like list and list of wellness techniques that I have. No, I'm I, I don't get stressed that easily. Um, but I can start to feel the sensation of being a bit overwhelmed before I start a job, and then once I start it, I'm like, oh, this is what you do, and it's fine. That is really far. That's so dark. Oh God. Welcome to the Restorative Force podcast, where we believe that it should feel good to be human. Modern life is fast paced and often unforgiving. It stresses our minds, bodies, and the planet more than it needs to. So through conversations and ideas, our aim is to uncover the roadmap for shifting unsustainable cultures at pace for both personal and planetary well-being. So take a deep breath and join me, Hannah Pang, as we explore the path towards restoration and regeneration for ourselves and the world around us. Welcome to the Restorative Force podcast. My name is Hannah Pang, and today I'm here with Jamie Dornan, who you will know from shows like The Tourist and The Fall, and from films like Belfast, A Haunting in Venice, and the infamous Fifty Shades of Grey. So Jamie, thank you so much for being here. You're very welcome. Um, So our podcast is all about uncovering the wellness practices, tips and tricks, rituals of people who are at the top of their industries, at the top of their game, the high performers of the world. So... Mm. As a very broad intro question, yeah. as the successful actor you are, yeah. what are some of the da- daily wellness practices that keep you performing to the level that you do? <laughs> they probably change a lot, okay. to be honest with you, Hannah. Like I, I, you know, you go through different phases in your life, don't you, where you're sort of uh, treating yourself better, maybe, yeah. or, or not. And I'm probably much more conscious, like we all are these days, about, you know, well-being and our own sort of personal health. I also have three kids under the age of 10 or under the age of 11 and their wellness is kind of more crucial to That's me. That's a priority. Than mine. <laughs> yeah, and I often sort of put my own wellness aside for, for them. And that, that's almost like a time thing as well. You know, we get up in the morning and it's madness in our <laughs> kitchen whilst we get these three people ready for school and fed and watered. And yeah. The right shoes on the right bag the, the the football boots the ballet kit whatever whatever it is like putting all that together and then sometimes you leave the door and realize that you have not even had like a sip of water yourself any food <laughs> a coffee tea nothing and you're suddenly on the school run like kind of already exhausted yes <laughs> you've only been up for like an hour and a half um but I tell you what we did recently be, be, just before Christmas we put a um well no about six months ago we put in a a, uh, infrared sauna in our sort of house mm-hmm. and then just before Christmas in the same room we put in a um, cold plunge oh nice so I've been this very week I've been every day this week uh, I've done what I'm trying to do the, like the Nordic cycle or whatever they call it so I'm doing like 20 minutes in the heat mm-hmm. and then about 4 minutes in the cold and it's four it's, we have it set at four degrees so um i'm doing and that i have to do i do have to say like i feel great okay. certainly in the yeah. immediate aftermath of it i feel like incredible um what it's doing longevity why i have no idea but like uh it feels amazing i have to say and i feel very lucky that we've got the setup in the house now that we we can do this so um and then sometimes the timing thing again if i have a busy day i don't have time for the sun i'll just jump in the cold plunge for few minutes and yeah i feel pretty great amazing yeah it's a it doesn't have to take long no it doesn't no i mean also you can do it in the shower too like people you know but it's harder to do it in the shower because it's just the way the water's hitting you it's quite aggressive and it's sort of, <laughs> it, you know with cold water it's not a nice way to experience it whereas this you like you know you very calmly sort of sink yourself in and it's still water and you're just surrounded by it and you just breathe and where the way the shower comes out, it's sort of panic inducing and it's very nature of the way it's coming at you. Yes. Um, so, and the same if, you know, uh, if you jump in the water, you kind of, in cold sea or you have to sort of move around so much, but like, and I haven't done, since we've had the plunge, I haven't been in like a cold, like, body of water like a big body of water and I don't know if I'll be I wonder will I be if able to just, sort of just be really yes. calm like I am in this in this thing or will I have to like, panic <laughs> and like try to keep warm um but yeah I love it but obviously I mean that, that is a recent thing yeah and for you know I'm in my 40s and I uh many many years had no, no experience like that and, and wellness wasn't really on my particularly in my 20s wasn't in my 
consciousness, probably. Yeah, just the success came naturally. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, look, I think there's lots of examples of people who have take no care of themselves who have success in, in, in lots of <laughs> realms too. But obviously for your own mental health and, and longevity and uh, health, you know, generally and energy and everything, it, it pays to look after yourself. And But again, everyone's, you know, it's taken a while for the collective to, to get there, really, you know. Um, I'm sure some people are, are ahead of the curve, obviously, but um, I feel now there's collectively more of a thing of like, oh, no, no you should look after yourself, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, but like, I've always been a very active person. Like, I would mm. never have gone through a period of inactivity. Okay. You know, even in my 20s, I was probably like drinking too much and stuff, but I still, I would, I doubt I would have gone a day without exercise you know, ever. Yeah. Really, and what's, what are your like go-to exercise routines? Uh, that changes too. You know, in my twenties, I ran all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I come from quite a sporty background, I guess you could say very sporty at school and for a couple of years after school, uh, when I first moved to London stuff, still, I was still playing rugby and, uh, and I, yeah, I, I did a couple of half marathons and stuff in my twenties. So I ran, I was running a lot. Um, yeah. uh, and I probably wasn't sort of, lifting weights or doing that sort of stuff even though my entire 20s well most of my 20s I, I was a model I was probably should have been at the gym more but <laughs> I was just not I just I never really took it that seriously I guess yeah and, fair so enough I, I didn't really do too much um I did whatever the bare minimum was um but now I'd go to gym more you know I, I'd sort of uh with my job now and for the last 15 years whatever Sometimes you know I have to get in very good shape for certain roles or whatever, or be bigger, or slimmer. You know, I'm always having to sort of uh, adapt my regime, I guess, fitness wise to suit whatever character I'm playing. Yeah. Um, and that sometimes means like pushing heavy things around a lot. <laughs> uh, and the thing I'm starting soon was um, hasn't been released yet, so I'm probably not allowed to talk about it. But um, yeah, I have to be in pretty good nick for that. So uh, these days I'm yeah I'm in the gym. Well, four or five days a week, probably, and and then, yeah, a round of golf if I can sneak it in. There nice. as well. Yeah, <laughs> always good for the mental health as well. Yes, and good to spend time outdoors. Yeah, I mean, listen, I spend my life defending golf uh, because people <laughs> who don't understand it, they really don't understand it. And my argument is like, I like being outside, and I like being with mates, and I like a bit of competition. So golf's like a really perfect uh, sport. Yeah, great. And as a game, the endless pursuit and challenge of it as an actual game is, it will ne I'll never be bored of it. Yeah. 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 I have not gotten into golf myself. I have Shame been to... You. You're from uh, Vancouver. You have some good golf up I there. I know. And I've, I've been to um, Top Golf oh, yeah. a couple of times. I've actually never done that. I'm just, I'm not good. Mm. I mean, I know I need to practice. Yeah, it's very hard to be naturally good at golf. Yeah, I mean, some people are naturally good. Yeah, I'm not one of the people like at all. <laughs> I work very hard at it. I'm still pretty rubbish, but um, I'm obsessed with it. But yeah, just get a couple of lessons. Yeah, it is a great thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not opposed to it. Okay, so good. back to some of your workout routines for yeah. roles. What has been like the most kind of grueling, intense workout situation that you've had to do in order to prepare for a role? Uh, I think probably for all the Fifty Shades films, because, you know, I'm, I set my top off a lot probably mm. and, uh, you know, had to be, yeah, in good in good nick. I mean, the, the, the character was always talking, they were talked in the books about how obsessive he was about fitness and and the vanity and, you know, and that sort of stuff. So uh, I got that job very like only like a couple of like what four weeks before we started filming five weeks so uh i usually you'd know quick months turnaround months in advance <laughs> that you're playing a character like that and you would act accordingly and mm. you'd be in the gym every day for those months and months uh that was probably a period where i, I yeah i've been surfing a lot so i must have been decent enough shape but like i suddenly was like jesus i have to work quite hard here and that was um well what the, the i remember a lot about the the sort of routine of it um we had a baby also three days before we started filming our first baby in vancouver so it was very mad life-changing time anyway and i tried to do it that like any time the baby woke up beside us at night i would have a protein shake 
<laughs> so it was kind good, of good like, routine to get yeah, into. It was yeah, and she'd be up a couple of times, and my wife would have to feed her, and I'd be like, oh, it's a good time for me to go. And so we were having re I was having really broken sleep the entirety mm. of that that first film, and uh, but I was getting a lot of <laughs> protein in, <laughs> um, and I'd sort of get back into my you know into our bed. And, my wife would be like, you just smell of like strawberry milkshake. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm going to brush my teeth just, after every yeah. shake, I guess. Anyway, yeah, it was a lot of a lot of that of just trying to put the weight on, mm. you know, because uh, I was probably a bit skinny before. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and then they had a, like a, a workout trailer, a whole tr gym trailer for Dakota and I that we could use, you know, as and when, and we had a trainer there, like yeah, our great. beck and call. So it was a lot of... A lot of work for that, for like yeah, a lot of physical stuff for that too. That sounds like a very intense time. It was mad. Yeah. How how did you handle it? Like from like a mental, emotional standpoint, that's a lot of big changes and not a lot of sleep in a short amount yeah, of time. I don't know. You just muddle through, don't you? I'm a, I'm a real like. Um, I I will say this: like I am someone who I could sleep for seventeen minutes on cold external stairs in the snow <laughs> and I'd be fine the next day. That's like I'm not one of those impressive. people who needs like, oh, get your eight hours sleep or you're, yeah. you know, I really, I'm like, um, I'm a real, I've got, I don't know, this might change the older I get, but my dad was the same and uh, so I don't think it will change, but I'm a really like, I can always find energy. Like mm. I'm, I'm, I've always got energy. I'm, I'm quite, can, quite hyper energy often and I so I've always got this thing where uh you know if someone's if I'm after some mad trip and I'm gonna have a lay over here I'm always like that's fine I, I'll be fine because I don't need that much to have a fulfilled day the next day or, or convince myself that I'm okay yeah that is very lucky yeah no I am no I do <laughs> I, re I realize that I realize that um and then sometimes when I'm tired like I can't really shut down I'm like exhausted mm. but um it doesn't happen that often Wow, great. Yeah. And what about like nutrition and what you eat? Does that affect you at all? Like how mindful of you are, are you of what you're eating? And does it change with, you know, different like role preparation? Yeah. I mean, again, if there's stuff where I, it, it often become like I'm either trying to bulk up, put weight mm -hmm. on or not. And if I am, then it's like shakes and then it's brown rice and, you know, grilled chicken and broccoli and stuff. And uh it's not that exciting um <laughs> but no like i have to admit i'm not someone who's ever super conscious about what they eat i probably should be more but i eat pretty well anyway you know mm. we 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 as a family and my wife and i as a couple would would eat well i guess and uh i guess from one to another way like we're in a nice you know economically we're in a nice position where we can buy very nice produce from mm. very nice places and know that that you know meat has come from it's this farm you know we live in the Cotswolds we live in the countryside for seven years and we're literally getting our meat and vegetables for <laughs> like everything that come next from next door like, yeah it, honestly <laughs> yeah. like you know our milk literally came from the neighbour next door and stuff uh, in little glass bottles <laughs> he'd like I'd hear him like tinkling around outside um, so I think we're kind of lucky there that I feel mm. like we we do eat well but also like I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm a because since we've been back in London like I'm a big fan of delivery you know and I, <laughs> I um so but I've always I know I have a very high metabolism mm. I, I always have um I, again I know that's a, a fortunate thing I feel very lucky there um I would I'm someone who'd really struggled to put on weight like I really would have to work very hard like if I if I was not training if I wasn't going to the gym and I was like drinking Guinness all day and eating ice cream I I know this is probably tough for people here but I I would lose weight yeah I have to work very hard to keep like muscle mass on mm -hmm. and stuff um and I find that really annoying thing in my life I have to say uh I'm someone who's always wanted felt like the skinny kid wanting to be bigger mm -hmm. so um so I but I know most people are like oh, fuck you <laughs> that's like what the dream so yeah, I um I know I have a very high metabolism, so I I, I know I can get away with right. sometimes when I just want, you know, thirty six chicken wings <laughs> and like you know truffle fries and yeah, great. A big 
two liter bottle of coke <laughs> well, I, whatever I'm, you works know, for you, know, you. <laughs> whatever you know i like to pig out sometimes and I, you know I'm, I'm i probably um i probably should watch what i eat more but i but as i say not generally i think i probably eat much better than the average person on the street you know i think we give ourselves such a hard time about that and actually the reality is lots of people eat rubbish all the time mm, you know totally. I, and I, I really don't comparatively yeah I don't yeah fair enough um and for when you have kind of a big role coming up or if there's a big event or like a daunting scene mm-hmm. coming up, is there anything in particular that you do like that morning ahead of it to, I don't know, just like hype yourself up a little bit? Like, do you have anything to like make sure that you, you know, are performing to the level that you want to be performing at like that day? Uh, I think music's a good thing mm. there. You know, I've, I've always been pretty guided by music, really. I'm a big fan, fan of music. Um Particularly when I was younger, I have to say. Mm. Uh, again, it's harder now. Like you know, my Spotify playlists are <laughs> all my kids' stuff. You yeah. Know? And I can't just select like random stuff on there anymore because it's just like, I mean, some I, I they're starting to like better music at the older they get, so it's I see some <laughs> decent stuff in there. Uh, but you know, for a while it was like nursery rhymes and stuff. It was kind of brutal on my phone. Mm. Uh but yeah, no, I would use music uh, to get me into certain certain moods um a lot of actors do that you know a lot of them it, it, like you know just before the scene have their headphones i've never done that i've mm-hmm. never felt i need to like have it right up until the moment that we're on camera but um i whatever works for you a lot of people do do like that but um yeah probably use music make sure i eat i'm not a good hungry person you know i'm a real like a proper Angry it's very stuff. distracting yeah. to be it hungry. Really, it really is. Like, yeah. I need to have had a good feed. Yeah. Which I struggle with in the mornings. I'm a terrible mm. breakfast person. I'm a real... I, w- I sort of feel like I need to... Uh, I, I remember, like, I, I, I don't wake up hungry. I'm not one of those people who wakes up hungry. But I eat, like, massive lunch and massive dinner. But I really struggle to have a big breakfast. Mm. Sometimes I'm in a hotel and someone's made it for me. It arrives, as if sure. But, like, uh, of a normal morning, I... I just not great about giving myself a big feed in yeah. the morning. And now I know it's meant to be the most important meal of the day. <laughs> but I'm just a bit like, oh, couldn't be bothered with it, you know. Yeah. So I'm even a, if you have a, like a big day of filming or something yeah. coming up, will you just like force yourself I, to I eat? I will kind of force myself. Okay. I actually will. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I'll try to put some fruit in there and some good, like try to get some good stuff in my system. Yeah. Um. Rather than, you know, 17 rashers of bacon, which I, I would probably do quite easily. <laughs> Great bacon in uh, in Canada. Canadian bacon. Yeah, I mean it's we're quite well known special. for it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's great. It's great. <laughs> okay. Anything else that you do kind of ahead of a big work day or big work event to get you in the zone? No, I I I, I <clears throat> I've toyed around with meditation in the last few years um, and sort of breathing technique stuff a bit. Um. To varying degrees of success, I think. Um, yeah. But I am quite, uh, I'm quite good, sort of on the fly. You know, I'm quite, I, 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 I'm quite good at instinctually putting myself in, in instinctively putting myself in the right place mm. mentally. I think, I think I, I, uh, that seems to be a bit of a strength that I maybe have that. Um, I'm able to get myself up in the right way for the right thing or whatever it is, you know, without too many, too many tricks. It's probably not what you want to hear. You probably want to hear all of this like list and the of wellness techniques that I have. Or just like, where do you think that strength <laughs> came from? I don't know. You know, I think probably my, you know, my parents and um, my dad, my dad was just, uh, I lost him a couple of years ago, but he was a very, 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 definitely the most positive person I've ever met in my life. Mm. So he was always able to just be up for stuff. And get himself in the right place, in the right mood. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I f- very, very rarely saw my dad in a bad mood, if ever. Genuinely, genuinely mean that. He's never grumpy, ever. It's so, pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So I do, I think I have an element of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting, actually. Yeah. And I guess with that, can you talk to us a little bit about kind of mental resilience? Yeah. I imagine the industry that you're in is quite... A tough one, yeah. Kind of in the public eye, yeah. Very critical industry. Yeah. How do you manage 
to be in the thick of that all the time. It's not that fun a lot of the time, yeah. that aspect of it. You know, uh, I feel really lucky that I, the sort of me, the bigger success stuff and the bigger um, sort of uh, more global attention-y stuff happened late. 20s early 30s when I met my wife when we were starting a family got married started a family so my entire focus from the time that I've had more eyes on me has been on my family mm. that's really helpful so I'm not there in my early 20s being handed the world and going hey this is great and I'm going crawl out of clubs at 4am <laughs> in LA and like deal with all of that scrutiny and whatever that would bring and all that sort of young naivety that you have and those reckless things you do as, as a kid and stuff you know I, I when the spotlight's been on me I have haven't been in those situations I guess yeah which has been really helpful I think um and look it's it's been good to me you know I'm, I'm in a I'm in a great place with everything and so I I uh, I've always been really good at uh, separating my work from my life. I, I really genuinely don't see being an actor as a like a lifestyle. I see it as just my job. Yeah. Um, I've got amazing friends in, in the same industry, like brilliant people that have been in my life for nearly 20 years now that I love, that will be in my life until the day I fall over and stop breathing. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I still have the same group of mates that I grew up with mm. uh, and none of them work anywhere near the entertainment industry. So I think that's really benefited me yeah. personally. And uh, I'm able to, if you stay in the noise all the time, you'll be really affected by the noise. Yeah. And I'm really good at getting away from the noise. Yeah. And it, it's really helpful. That is a good skill. And I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with no matter what mm -hmm. their job is or what industry they're in is mm -hmm. as soon as those stressful bits of life start creeping in and infiltrating every other bit of your life. Sure. That's when it's, it just becomes way too overwhelming. No, sure. And then you're thinking about it all too much. You know, if yeah. you're only surrounding yourself with other people who are talking about the same industry or whatever, it's mad. Because mad. Like, then you start pin, pinning yourself up against other people and you think, well, what, sorry, what job did you say? Oh, why haven't, you know, why haven't I been offered that? What, you know, just, it's nonsense. It's noise. Like, you just got to be like, things are good for me. Uh, I just accept that whatever is happening and the way things are going now is is working for me. Yeah, and just block out all of that other stuff, uh, which I yeah I think I've I've been able to do pretty well. Yeah, nice. I just wanted to take a few moments from this conversation to tell you about Rain Flow State Mushrooms. This is our new mushroom formula with ingredients known to boost focus, energy, and mental clarity. So if you struggle with brain fog, with fatigue, with getting distracted, with feeling really stressed by just the noise of life, I think you'll really love Flow State. We've already been getting amazing feedback from customers who say it's been game changing for them, both at work and at home. It's all natural and made here in the UK. So you can learn more about Flow State by visiting rainwellbeing.com. And for times in at work or just in life that have been particularly stressful or particularly challenging at those kind of peak stress times. Yeah. What can you give us some examples of what that looks like and how do you manage this that kind of stress? I think I've just again I've always had in in the most heightened of those moments I've had kids. Mm. I, honestly like all it's my all our my wife and I all our energy goes into those kids <laughs> like you know really it's just not about me mm. I'm just I just I don't I'm not thinking of me in those moments there's always these other three <laughs> people or you know the different times when it was two of them or one of them whatever but the, there's always been in as I say with the timing of my when my career started really sort of happening in a sort of big way was when we started family so I re honestly I've always just been like let's not get bogged down talking mm. about me because you know uh this is way more important that yeah we have these kids um i'm a big walker like i love going out walking i think that's a really underrated um i i despise laziness like i just <laughs> cannot handle it um we are so, as a as a as a species humans are so lazy and everything and everything that has been designed is to make us more lazy mm. i feel like these days you know, it's like 
all like God forbid you even drive your own car anymore and we'll have fuck that you just they'll, they'll drive it so I'm like what's going on? I'm left doing it, nothing like I, I can't stand it I really hate it um, I'm going to stay as sort of analog as I can for as long as I can I really just you know um, I struggle you know and everything how we get food and it's all just delivered to your door and you know even it's like I need to pop out and get one. Well, I could just use this app and get that. Someone will bring you know, it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Someone's at your door like ten minutes later, and you're like, "What happened to like just popping pop down out, to yeah. the shop?" You know. <laughs> so I'm I'm a bit old school like that. And okay. I, I love walking. I do think my mind clear. I particularly love walking around this city. I love London. Mm. I love walking around London. Um. So I always be um. Trying to walk places, I'm really. I'm the worst version of myself if I'm in the back of a car <laughs> and there's traffic and I have no control over what happens. Yeah. And that can happen a lot in London because traffic's bad here. It's such a busy place. So I'm always like, if people are like, can we get your car? I'm like, no, I'll get the train and I'll walk. And I, I just, I, then I feel like I'm in the control of my own destiny. Yeah. Unless there's a train strike <laughs> and then I'm buggered. But you know, like, uh, I like to, um, I love walking around with music in my ears. Honestly, just walking around the city, it's like my happy place. Yeah. Like, it really is. And I think you just, your mind just clears and you're just taking, I'm honestly like, it's like something of a, you know, t today I got the train and I, I, I walked and I was like, you know, it's a beautiful, sunny day and you're seeing buildings differently. And like you're seeing them for the first time. I really like, but I come like I'm in a you know, music video or something sometimes. <laughs> um, I become really aware of my surroundings. I think it's so good for your mind. Yeah. And it means you're not on your phone, really, if you're walking. I mean, you are, but you're knocking into people and you're being that nightmare person who won't look up. And yes, it's all a such a course of you. mine. Oh, my God. And then you're like, you're, you're going to have to look up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, but you keep, you know. Um, so I can't stand that. Um, uh, so I, you know, and then... Yeah, I think if, if I'm back in the car, then you just sit on your phone, don't you? And I think that's really... Uh, yeah, the phone thing gets me. I'm, I'm, I, I can't handle it. Yeah, I really try to find ways to not be on my phone. I find walking a really good way. I yeah. know I'm, I know my music is coming from my phone, sure, but <laughs> I will literally just press play and put my phone in my pocket and really try not to. Yeah, to look at it. I am also a big walker. If yes. some if somewhere is like takes me an hour to walk, an hour is probably like my max. Yeah, sure, but it's but anything hour and under. Yeah, I'll, for sure, I'm walking. Yeah, I love to hear that. Yeah, it's really great, it and does. you see great different parts. You see the city totally differently. Yeah, you know, and I spent you know in my twenties, I spent loads of time in New York, and it's it's a totally different mentality there. Like everyone everyone walks. It's yeah. just like that's well, a thing, and then LA is like the opposite of that. Yeah, it's faster. My whole thing is like yeah. it's always like. You know, hopping on the tube or hopping on the train, whatever, and walking will definitely get you there faster than a taxi. For sure. Or an Uber. 100% yeah. will. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. Yeah, people are so lazy. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, I feel like, so something that we've been exploring a lot is how so many elements and aspects of our modern culture have forced us to live in a way that isn't optimal for how we are actually designed mm -hmm. as humans. Mm -hmm. So we're we're living in a way that's actually species atypical. Right. So it forces us to um yeah, live in ways that are just unhealthy for us because we're we're physically literally not designed to live in the ways that our modern culture uh, encourages or right. you know sculpts us yes. into yes. and so many of the things that you've mentioned so like family community yep. getting outside walking that's all stuff that is what we are like biologically pro sure. programmed to to do yeah sure sure yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're saying that <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I think uh, you know uh, maybe I think a lot uh, some of that is down to a generational thing and the mm. age I am and I grew up without a phone you know I am the, you know last of that generation mm. of you know uh I've went through my entire teens without a phone yeah. I think I, I got one I think when I was 18 so you know my entire adolescence uh without access to that and not internet but not not really not really like, yeah the old chat room you didn't know what was going on you know yeah. uh and as a result of that I think you are still very much set in that like, like pre-internet sort of way of 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 living yeah um where you do want to 
do stuff for yourself and get your hands dirty and and exert yourself rather than just have everything on apps. <laughs> yeah. How are you approaching that with your kids? Yeah, it's tough. Obviously, it's so normal now for them to have screens yeah, everywhere. Yeah. No, we're super aware. Jesus, we talk about it a lot. Um, none of them have... Our, our eldest is 10 and she doesn't have a phone yet. And, um, of course, the day will come when, when she needs to have one and we'll want her to have one because yeah. she'll be, you know, getting the train to school or whatever, whatever it is, you know. Um but we're not there yet, mm. but we talk about it a lot. Yeah. And they uh, ask a lot, you know, I bet. about when that happens. You know, they've got iPads, kind of great for traveling particularly, but we don't let them look at them during the week or anything like that. And they get a little bit of time at the weekends. And, you know, and then it's, it, but we have to be good about it too. You know, if sometimes you're amazing now at home, like we have to set an example. Sometimes they're like, can we go on our iPads? We're like, no. Like, You're just sat in your phone. I'm like, shit. Like, why? Fair yeah, I know. It really got us there. <laughs> you know, like, why is it okay for us to like just be scrolling through stuff? Um, I did delete Instagram off my phone be- about two days before Christmas, mm-hmm. and that's felt like a really good thing for me. I have to say, yeah, because like everyone else, I'm guilty of just like rabbit sitting hole. and scrolling. Oh my god. I was at an event the other day and they said we, on average, people scroll two kilometers <laughs> worth of stuff on their phones every day. But that is, <sighs> oh, that's, that's, so depressing. F- that's far. <laughs> that is really far. That's so dark. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Well, my wife and I both deleted it and she's got some other thing. It's And I, I'm sort of slagging her off a bit like it's a replacement <laughs> that she's found, but she claims it is some more sort it's of high thing. Good for you. Yeah. It's, all, it's like, I, I, can't, I don't remember the name of the app, and so I'm not going to give it a plug. But, <laughs> um, but they, it's like curated articles that, that they, based on her whatever, um, they think that she would like, um, and by authors and journalists and stuff that she likes. So it's actually a f- feed of stuff that she would be trying to, be searching for all the rubbish mm. to find but i am a bit like it is just does just keep you on your phone yeah you know so uh i've reluctant i haven't uh caved and <laughs> downloaded that up um and I, I do think it's it is it's better you know but i wish like even now when you're watching tv and stuff you can be just like it really into the show but also like checking your phone like why can't you just go i'm watching this thing for an hour and a half whatever mm. it is put your phone away Nothing bad. What's going to happen? You know, you miss a call. I mean, you know, nobody calls you anyway. Like, who's who speaks on the phone anymore? You know, it's, you miss a couple of voice notes. And so, yeah, we should all be better at that. Yeah, agreed. It's it's hard though when so much of your life is mm. on your phone. And that's the thing, and that often is our response to the kids. It's like we're not just like having fun on our phone, guys. <laughs> we're not just like playing, you know, the like the games that they love on their iPads or whatever. It's not like we're doing that. I'm like booking your your ballet lesson thing on this thing you have to fill out this form or I'm you know uh, organizing this uh, I don't know birthday party and I have to pay um, I feel like I'm just internet banking the whole time on my phone that's all I'm doing like daddy's paying for stuff that's what daddy's doing paying for your life I'm paying for your life yeah all the time but you know you, you often are doing some annoying thing practical a lot boring of life thing. admin a load of life admin on there yeah I'm like I'm not having, I said, I'm not playing it's not fun like this oh, God. do you have any other just thinking of like okay what if you are no longer scrolling as much yes on your phone now yeah what has that left you more time to do oh ponder <laughs> great I don't know if it's a great thing actually um probably I probably just being hopefully what it's doing is I'm a bit more present for the kids mm. you know I'm my wife I'm probably um, yeah I'm probably just a, a bit more in the room yeah because I'm not like uh, hold on let me just watch this guy add this sauce to this <laughs> barbecue <laughs> and see the effect of it um, you know I'm just uh, that's really made me miss Instagram just thinking about <laughs> that, that sort of content there is some good stuff on <laughs> there some great stuff there is some that's good the stuff thing there's there. some great stuff yeah. you know uh, and also it's really interesting then seeing like news, news feels really different now when you're not seeing the stuff on Instagram because you're seeing Instagram, that stuff on Instagram that the news outlets just wouldn't share, mm. you know, I don't want to get super political here, but often about whatever madness is happening in the world and you're like, whoa, 
mm, they're not showing this on the 10 o'clock news, you know. Yes. Um, so I feel less informed in a way without mm. Instagram because there is a for more informative, serious side to Instagram. It's not all, you know, totally. puppies and stuff. So, um, but so I feel like I miss out a bit on that, but I do think overall it's a it's a, it's a better thing and I am more present. Yeah, yeah. And I find a lot of um, what I am trying to spend more time doing, and a lot of it is on my phone, I have to say, but yeah. is um, like instead of scrolling, similarly to what your wife has done, yeah. like how can I just replace it with something that feels a little bit more productive? Sure. So I have my, you know, Duolingo going. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm trying to learn Mandarin and Japanese. Fair play. Wow. At I, the same time, jeepers. Well, I, I have a trip to Japan book, so it's it's very Okay. Functional. Okay. But is there anything? But Mandarin as well as Japanese. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm half Chinese. Yeah. So I have this. I'm like trying to connect to my roots. Okay. And you don't know any. No. None. Would you not just like try to tackle that first and One then at get a time. the Japanese? Yeah. I, I just they must be so contrasting. Is that not really? Hard? I I'm finding Japanese to be a lot easier really? than Mandarin. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But I, I've also just Fair downloaded like um like brain training brain oh, okay, game yeah, sure. apps that kind of yeah, thing okay. um but my question for you is is there anything else that you're doing where you're i don't know like learning something or uh i don't know any other kind of like hobbies or anything like that that you feel are like fulfilling of your time probably not <laughs> fair enough I'm you're sorry, a busy guy sorry, sorry to say um i'm starting a big long job soon and uh so I have a thing also, I, I get a real like guilt thing if I am, if I'm reading like a book mm -hmm. or I'm like learning a language, I'm never learning a language, <laughs> but like when I'm reading a book and it's not for work, but I know the next job I'm doing, I, I, I it doesn't sit right. I'm like, oh, this is bad. I should be just like doing character research and yeah. like my job, even though I don't start filming for a couple of months, whatever it is. So I'm a couple of months off starting to film something now and I'm a bit like, I keep getting revisions of the scripts and I'm a producer on it. So I ha I sort of have to respond and, and give notes and stuff. And I'm a bit like, oh, I can't be just doing brain games in my phone yeah, yeah, fair or, enough. <laughs> or, or reading a book that isn't related, related to the job. Yeah. yeah. So I sort of beat myself up about that. Um, I do do a weird thing. I... I at least every two years, certainly every year, I do an IQ test. <laughs> really? I don't know why. My dad was really into like IQ. It's such a strange way of measuring. I mean, you know, people, it's it it's it feels like it's a dying thing where people talk about like your yeah, IQ. Yeah, I anymore. haven't it's heard like, of that in ages. Yeah, it's not really a thing. But like, dad, my dad was really into it. I guess and dad had an extremely high IQ. Professor of medicine was a very impressive person, and I um. Yeah, I, I don't know. For some reason, like he had sort of implanted it in my head, like when we were kids, maybe my sisters and I, about like the importance of like a good IQ. <laughs> do you, do you just... study for it or no? Because it's all sequence stuff. Okay. You know, and we we did a thing. They have it here and that in Northern Ireland, like at the eleven plus, we have to pass this exam to get into secondary school. And in my day, it was a you got a one, two, three, or four, one being the best, and it, 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 uh, thank God somehow I got a one, but it was um. Essentially, an IQ test. Okay. Like the eleven plus is it, that's kind of what it was. Se you know, sequences and um, and looking at charts and uh, diagrams sometimes and and trying to connect things and what's missing and it's kind of a and also a lot of people's brains don't work in that way. Or don't right. work well in that way. Yeah. So that's why it's a bit of a slightly redundant test, mm. maybe because people are like, well, there's probably way better ways of judging intelligence. And saying that, and there's I think, so many different types of intelligence. Totally. As well. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I think a lot of this, the way that exams are in school is a terrible way to judge intelligence. You know, it's, it's memory test stuff. Yeah. You know, who just wanted to remember all that stuff they were taught or the stuff they read in the book. Um, I mean, some of the stupidest people I've ever met did very well in their levels <laughs> and went to like great unis and yeah. genuinely like not bright. Mm -hmm. And then some of the most interesting, <laughs> impressive and intelligent people I've met did really badly at school. Mm. So I, I don't, there's no perfect way, I don't think, to measure intelligence, but I guess an IQ test is just one of those ways. And for whatever reason, it's uh, it's been a part of my life. So sometimes just, uh, often when I'm away, if I'm away filming and I'm away from the family, and you know, I try to get back every weekend, or if I'm away somewhere far, they come with me. Mm -hmm. like, like in Vancouver for a long time, Australia, they, they, they come with me, LA. But um, 
Uh, yeah, I'll do an IQ test every, every, <laughs> probably every 18 months, every two years. Really interesting. Yeah. I don't know I'm, anyone I'm else who does that. I pretty much always get the same score too. It's really well, that's good. Yeah, so I'm not, it's a good way of going like I'm not losing it. Yeah. You know, I'm not getting stupider. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably doing, I'm just probably doing the same test over and over again. I'm like, this looks familiar. Yeah, you've <laughs> you just know. memorized yeah, it. Exactly, now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's all good. No. What else do you do like in preparation? So in this period, kind of mm-hmm. before you go into a new project, yeah. what else is involved with that? Oh God, just lots of um, fear uh, <laughs> and trying to convince yourself that, you know, you're the right guy, I guess. Mm. There's a lot of self-convincing. and um, What does that look uh, like for you? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's something you battle all the time. I think, you know, actors are way more self-conscious than I, I believe people believe them to be, I, I think. Yeah. Um, you meet some very confident actors, of course, but like, um, and we all have ways of portraying confidence. Uh, but I think we're all fearful that it's all gonna, the rug's gonna be pulled from under us at any point. You know, you hear a lot of actors say that sort of thing, imposter syndrome and everything. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, the work, it's just a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, you know, I can just find myself, you know, I'm, I, I don't get stressed that easily, um, but I can start to feel the sensation of being a bit overwhelmed before I start a job and then once I start it I'm like oh this is what you do and it's fine okay. but particularly I, w- I will have had eight months off when I start this next job and that's the longest I've ever had off in my career and part of it because I wanted time off uh, after the second series of the tourist I was a bit tired and I just wanted time off and then there's a strike and a writer's strike and an actor strike so I wasn't able to work so um, that sort of enforced my decision to take this time off so uh, as a result of that I feel like a bit like whoa rusty like I haven't mm. acted for a while or yeah. something uh, so there'll be a bit of that just trying to convince myself and a lot of it's really practical stuff of you know just character stuff and, and trying to get your head around um, most tricky project to talk about when it hasn't been announced <laughs> anyway uh, and there's a f- physicality thing going on with the with, uh, character that I need to work uh, um, quite a specific thing because of a sort of uh, a sort of activity they do or sport they do I guess that so it's quite particular the sort of fitness mm. I need to be doing that I've, I've started doing recently um, and then it's learning Jesus it's learning lines it's like that that sort of slog of, of line learning uh, which uh, I don't I change I sort of changed my method for line learning uh, almost job to job really yeah I find certain things certain times things seem to work for me better and, and then next time I try that it doesn't work so well. Does it depend on like the role and the character and maybe, like who the maybe. character is? Sometimes it depends I think if I'm like doing an accent and stuff too. Oh it's, yeah. It sort of manages to creep its way into how I learn my lines. It's it's strange. It's a strange thing. So I never have one set way. I You know I probably have it's either one of two or three ways um, uh, and it's also often dependent on like how much dialogue I have. You know, sometimes yeah. I'm t- t- talking a lot, you know. <laughs> and look, I'm, again, very lucky, but like I'm, I'm often the lead in these mm. things or the co-lead. So I was just a, a, a lot of work to yeah. do, you know, a lot of uh, big stuff, you know. So yeah, get my head around that, I guess. Do you have any, this is a random one, do you have any like memory tips? No. Cool. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I don't. Uh, no, uh, what like eating spinach or something? Like no, no. This. Is it just like? Are you literally just like going through it like over and over and over again? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. I think that seems to to work. That for does me. the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's you. It if you often what I find I go, you know, you get some actors who won't look until they're in the makeup trailer that morning. They literally, really? yeah, yeah, like very big actors who like won't learn their lines until the day of and because they, want it, to, they want it to be to fresh you know because you want okay. to have the whole it's idea like is we're trying to sell this idea that we are these people and we've never said these words before right. so you are trying to keep a freshness and I get that to a point I, I am a, quite an instinctual actor and I don't like to go in with a great deal of a plan often slightly again depending on what, what I'm dealing with um, I want it to feel like something drops down in the moment that I can use mm. um and uh, 
so yeah but so I, I but actually often when I go to find myself like again it, also if you're busy and you're the lead or whatever you're pretty much in every day or often you are in every day and often all day every day and um it's just a timing thing sometimes and mm. like if you say you've got a massive week of dialogue you just haven't had the time to 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 know it all really well often so often the night before I'll go to look at something and then I'll go oh actually I do know this I've obviously been looking at it in some sort of panicky way <laughs> on and off for weeks right and you go to go oh god I've got the big scene tomorrow let me let me look at it. you go oh no I know it I know this mm. um so it's often by you've done more work than you think you have yeah. if you've prepared um you know I guess not getting hammered every night and stuff would probably be a good idea that does usually help. help your memory mm-hmm. a bit you know but, but I don't get um uh again probably something to annoy people listening but I don't really I don't get hangovers um <sighs> Again, I think it's a slightly down to my metabolism or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, um, my dad, again, dad never got them. Good genes. And I don't get them. Yeah, I'm lucky. My sisters get them. So oh. I don't know. I got really lucky there. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite lucky. Yeah. It sounds like when you were talking about, you know, the actors who just, you know, can take it on in mm. the moment. We've been doing a lot of research recently into like being in a flow state. Yeah, sure. Of just kind of you know, being um, kind of unhindered by, I don't know, any unhelpful conditioning yeah. or just like really being your like highest, most like true authentic self. Yes. And when you can connect with that, you do just show up, you know, better and like as yeah. you need to and you perform at the levels that you need to sure. because you're in your flow. It's not, that kind of sounds like what you're describing. Yeah. And we've all experienced that, haven't we, at some level? And I always... I've had I have days like that where I'll just like have like a coffee meeting and I'll be in that state and I'll just be like bah, 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 and like I feel idea, like idea. so yeah and yeah. I'm really like and I always like go like write down what you had like what you've eaten yes. already today like how many coffees you had whatever it is and it, it seems that when I've done that there's no pattern <laughs> <laughs> whatsoever I'm like trying to put it like how much sleep did I have mm-hmm. what did I have for dinner last night, uh, you know, what time did I get up? What did I eat this morning? Did I have a coffee? Did not? And it's always it's felt quite random to me when I've yeah. tried to kind of log that. Um, I don't know. I I'd love because it's an amazing feeling, and I, um, I've been writing more and more recently in, uh, in the last few years, writing scripts and stuff. And uh, when I'm in that that flow state when you're writing, it's um, you feel like Superman, like it's incredible. Yes. It's, you know, it really, it suddenly just feels really easy. It is just coming at you. And it's like, and you do find that acting sometimes you have these moments where it's just like, maybe it's what for one take, you just feel like really invincible. Yeah. But it's harnessing that and being able to be like, what, and like make what it, gets me like, there? Like repeatable. Yeah, yeah. Like what's the formula yeah. for it? Yeah, we've been, um, we've been thinking about it a lot yeah. recently. We've, um, we've just developed uh, like a mushroom capsule. Yeah, and great. And the like formula of it the purpose of it is to help you get into your flow state and like how to connect with it so right. it can be something that yeah feels a little bit more reliable rather than just crossing your fingers and hoping sure, you'll, sure. you'll find your flow that but also day i feel like it'll be you know there's a chance it's a bit different for everyone definitely you know? um and even something like that like the what like a capsule like two might work for someone and one might work and body size comes into it and Absolutely. all that stuff like, my wife said that to me the other day like she said like do you ever think about like just um sort of recommended sort of intake of like tablets and stuff it's they should really vary more you know yeah you got like some six foot six man taking the same dosage as like a five foot one woman their chances, bodies are very different yeah chances <laughs> are they're gonna behave differently in their systems you totally. know but here we are going what does it say oh it says take two okay i'll take two yeah two might be like there was an, um, there was a really great book that was talking about this i think it's called invisible woman right and it's basically how our our world is built for like the average man, man yeah, and how Jesus, yeah. like medications uh different types of like medical treatments yeah. even like the design of seat belts is all based on like an average man and so that's why women get oh my God, like yeah. hurt oh my and like God, don't get proper treatment more often yeah. yeah and crash test dummies and stuff are probably just like men wait yeah exactly <laughs> it's really dark uh, yeah Jesus so Christ. anyways that's 
That's a whole other issue. <laughs> God, yeah, that's a big one to solve. But yeah, for sure. Should give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Getting back to our yeah. flow state. I think yes. for me, what I found is it so often comes when you're like doing what you're supposed to be doing, like what you were put on this planet to do. And right. when that aligns, the universe is like, okay, cool. You you figured it out. Yeah. That's, right, that's right, one. Right. Do you find, I don't know, did you always feel like you had uh, like a calling or like does work no. like provide that sense of, you know, purpose for you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't see it that way. I don't think I, I, I've certainly never felt that I had a calling and it, it, it certainly wasn't performing. I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. In saying that, I mean, when I was younger, I had lots of moments where I performed and was like, this feels great mm. and I'm getting a nice, people seem to respond well to this um, on some level, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I've certainly never been like... I've just got to perform. I've got to be on that stage. That's just not how I was, how I was in my mind when I was uh, younger. Um, again, I just see it as something that I think I can do, and it's been good to me, and it's a job, and uh, you know, I, I love it. Yeah. I really love it. Um, but um, I don't. I'm not convinced it was like my like calling or set in the stars. <laughs> no. Yeah. Fair no. enough. I could have really easily been doing something else. And, yeah. And maybe even been better at that. I don't know. But Did, look, I'm there... sitting here from, I've, I've been really nice. I've had a really great run. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm in a good place with it. But um, I think I probably could have also been really happy doing other stuff mm. too. Like, yeah. uh, I have lots of interests outside of the arts. Yeah, was there something else that you like as a kid? Like what did you want to be when you Just grew up? Just sport, like I'm obsessed with sport. Okay. Like I'm really really obsessed with sport. Um I I wasn't good enough to play. I was I'm a good sportsman. I was a good sportsman. I, you know, <laughs> still try to convince myself I can barely walk today. I played five aside on on on, <laughs> on a few days ago for the first time in two months and uh, realized that my body doesn't doesn't like it anymore. <laughs> um uh, but uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm sort of sports mad that I I feel like uh, yeah I probably even with all the work in the world wasn't good enough to play professionally anything, but you know I'm I'm I would have been a decent at a lot of sports yeah um but I probably would have wanted to find my way into working in sport in some some way yeah That's is football the, your go to no rugby would have been my main, mm. my main sport and and uh rugby and golf really now um but there's I'm big football soccer fight yeah i mean I'm, there's wouldn't be my sports that i wouldn't have a pretty keen interest on i wouldn't have a lot of knowledge on yeah re reality wise <laughs> um so i thought you know i probably one of those kids who watched jerry Maguire and thought that looks like the coolest job in the world mm -hmm. um um and obviously ended up nowhere near that um in my vocation but i um i've got to meet a lot of cool sports people i bet yeah i um, um i've only very recently gotten interested in rugby okay good right but there was a i think it was like november december i would i was watching like every rugby game oh wow well so the I, world cup was on yeah that was yeah, it that was why. that's that's the reason <laughs> i was like all or nothing yeah, i had yeah, no yeah. interest in rugby and then all of a sudden i had to watch every game i'm gonna watch the game tomorrow yeah six well, nations yeah well I, I, there's ireland are playing tonight in the six oh nations. okay all I right know, i don't know when obviously this will go out after that but Ireland France is opening Six Nations tonight and the two the two favourite teams for the title. Ooh, okay, I'll tune in. And we we won Ireland won the Grand Slam last year and I was there for that in Dublin, which was a pretty fun long day. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, kind of switching gears, but yeah. also thinking about enjoyable fun times. What's your favorite way to decompress after a long day or a stressful day of filming or working? I love a bath. Amazing. Big, big fan of a bath. Yeah, me too. Quite de divisive, it seems. A lot of people really? don't like. Yeah, a lot of people are you just wallowing in your own dirt and stuff. People have really weird. I, I've met people who are like, oh god, I can't believe you do a bath. Um, and also, if they're so worried about that, like have a quick shower, shower first. Yeah. I, mean, I know it's probably water wastage. People be on, but like I don't know. <laughs> like also, I'm not. I'm not filthy. <laughs> <It's such a laughs> wallowing in your own dirt. It's such a weird thing to say. Like as if we get. In, I don't work down the mines. Yeah. Like I'm not. I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking I'm just about you'll, like you'll a normal be fine. day. Yeah, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not muddy. Um, but yeah, uh, I do. I do like a bath. And yeah. I do you know like proper like nice smelly stuff in the do bath. Like bath salts. Yeah, like... I do all that and Epsom salts sometimes if, if my body's a bit sore if I've been doing a lot of stunts at work or whatever or if I've been playing. 
sport, football, whatever, my body is sore. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of that, and mm -hmm. I'll do like a podcast or, or well, I it, I was filming second season season of a tourist in Ireland uh, last year, and I did um try to prop my iPad up in the bath to watch whatever you know series or whatever I was watching and um, I'm usually pretty good at that I do that quite a lot I'll often like sort of bring my laptop or an iPad or something and have it by the bath so I can sit and watch something yeah and uh, yeah I dropped my iPad in, in, in straight in the bath and, and, and broke it only just replaced it actually there a couple well, that was of one of the dangers ago. of doing that I know it was really it was so precarious I was watching it going that's really stupid the way you've set that up like that won't work mm. and then of course it, it's, it did not it slid in yeah. it slid in at this like key point uh, what was I watching the succession or something I don't know it was like some it was like a tense really moment. A tense moment yeah. and a drop was <laughs> anyway um, yeah I do I'm a big fan of a bath mm. and a walk like I'll go yeah. I'll go for a big walk and and a bath and um you know, but also it depends where I'm filming and if my family are there and whatever. But if I film, if I'm filming in the summer somewhere and I'm near a golf course and I finish work at like a reasonable time, like six or seven, I will get out and try to play at least nine holes and of golf. Yeah. And that would be really good for my head. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you do? Um, and swimming. For... When I was, when I was, sorry, oh, yeah. when I was in Dublin, I swam loads like I'm I wouldn't be historically a huge swimmer I guess mm. but um I had a in the apartment I was in in Dublin a really nice pool nice. and nobody used it so I'd just be in there yeah just really like properly swimming doing lengths and lengths and lengths um yeah and I, I actually find that really good for my mind so, yes yeah. my partner is an avid swimmer right and he says that as well it's it's basically like meditation because sure. you have to focus so much on breathing sure yes, I, I only so got true. into swimming last year i did my first triathlon and it oh, was the wow. first time oh, i had Jesus. to like wow. fair play i had to first time i had to like properly swim not just yeah. like vacation swim right okay. so he had to like teach me how <laughs> to like had to do it pool. yeah exactly <laughs> so i had to like learn how to breathe wow. and swim and it, you do have to be like really quite mindful yeah big about time it. and I think there's even a level up like definitely from what I'm doing my brother-in-law is a like swam for Ireland and stuff like he's a genuinely brilliant swimmer um and I keep trying to you know so many kids now in our in both of our lives my sister and him and, uh when when I'm with him and we're by the pool I'm always trying to like get him to to teach me a wee bit yeah but, it's usually I'm throwing kids up in the air yeah. and being tortured, so um, <laughs> I, I don't quite get to. But I'd love actually him to really teach me to do the breathing properly and yes. get more out of it and get not have to breathe so much and you know all that stuff. And because it is a from the little I've done of it, I do feel like it's a really good thing. I also feel like it's a really good thing for like your back strength and your core, core and everything, yeah. and like keeping yourself strong. I've been having a real issue. In the last six months, I put my back out twice, and it totally derails you. Like I'm, I'm talking like one time it was a week, which wasn't that bad, and the last time it was three weeks of like, mm. I, and I was, I really fell into a bit of a depression. If I'm totally honest with yeah. you, I was really, I'm not someone who's inactivity does not suit me. Like I hated it, but yeah. I wasn't able to just like bounce around and like carry the kids and do all that stuff, or train or do exercise. I couldn't do anything. It was really bothering me. And it does always the same. It's lower left. It just seems to go out a lot. And mm. it seems to be like if I play football, it's the thing area. So I'm trying to find ways of making that a bit stronger. Because yeah. I'm strong. Like I can, I feel strong in the gym and stuff. But I seem to have a weakness there. And I know a lot of people are talking about Pilates and about that being a really great, you know, Yes, very good for the core. all of that, yeah. For yeah. sure. So I might do that. I just, those machines sort of freak me out a bit. Pilates, they're, they're very hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Have you been to like a reformer, Pilates no, reformer my wife class? Goes, uh, my wife goes about three times a week to Pilates it reformer. It is yeah, hard. It's gnarly. Yeah. 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 Give it a go. Um, is there anything else that you do for like like physical like recovery? Um, now that we have this ice bath oh, thing, yeah. you know, that's kind of like, even I have to say the difference of my back because, you know, I played soccer, football, whatever the other night. And was really in, because it had been a bit of a shock, it had been a couple of months, my body was not happy with me, it was going, you're 41, stop chasing that ball around. <laughs> um, and I, my back was sore, really sore yesterday morning, and then I've done two days of sauna and ice bath, 
and the difference today is incredible. Yeah. I really do. You know, I also had the foam roller out earlier and I was like, m- the pain of that bloody thing. <laughs> anyway, I do think that there's some credit there for the, for the hot and the cold that has helped my back in yeah. the last 24 hours. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last question okay. for you. Um, so, again, so much of what we are thinking about, talking about, trying to create solutions for is to help people live optimally to how we are designed, how our minds and bodies are designed. Mm-hmm. Um, but what does optimal living or an optimal day, yeah. what would that look like for you? I think up pretty early. If I can get up before the kids wake up, it's good. I love waking them up. Yeah. It's like my favorite thing. Um, I often you don't have to, to be honest. I'm usually waking us up, but there's occasionally where they're like lying in a bit. Um, and I love waking them up. Um, let's just take a normal, like a school day. Uh, getting them to school in a way where they, we've given them the best that they could have in that time allotted in the morning. And they, they're happy to go into school is really critical for us. Mm. It changes our whole day if we send them into school and they're like buzzing. And that is often not the case because they often fight with each other the whole way into school and pulling each other's hair. It's a nightmare. <laughs> it can be a real nightmare. Yeah. They don't want to do the football match. They have to do that day compulsory. Football match they have to do. They don't. There's a, so it's often chaotic. But if we can get them into school in good, it just makes our day so much easier. Then I think I like to of then have a breakfast because I I feel like I've earned it. Mm. You know, the thing I said earlier about I don't wake up hungry. Yeah. But if I b- build up an appetite, um, then I really will enjoy like a bigger breakfast. So I'll try to eat, go to the gym because I, I, I actually just have to. Like I have to do that. I will try to then spend some time with my wife doing the most boring thing ever. It's like going through our diary. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like a big part of marriage yeah. it's like our long relationship it's especially with kids it's like navigating it's a lot week. of coordination yeah, and are you going to take them there you go, and yeah. she's got that at that time okay well she's got that at that time so I can take her, you know, that like that's a big part of our, our daily life getting that done really need to I set aside time for like personal admin mm-hmm. I really am someone better like I've become really good at as soon as I get an invoice paying it straight away like just dealing with stuff in the immediate immediacy yeah. I think it's really important because even if it's the smallest thing if you let it linger you know even like replying to text so I try to be really good about getting all that stuff done in my head so clear um, in a really perfect day I would do a clear out of my wardrobe I am I am the most smug person in the world after I've done a clear out <laughs> of the wardrobe and I do a lot I'm really good and there's some charity shops that benefit massively from me <laughs> let me tell you where and where we live I'm mm. like here we go the boot is full yeah. stuff. I was like it's sent so much I get given a lot of stuff for yeah. you know, free or whatever so there's a lot of stuff I you know it hasn't even been opened I'm like here you go, here you go. <laughs> sell that um, uh, yeah um, b- big launch if I can sneak the driving range and hit some golf balls, <laughs> I'm a happy boy. And then it's picking up the kids and, you know, trying to be there and be really present for them mm. and listen to their day and listen to their worries. Uh, of Often there's plenty full of mind there. Feed them, try to spend some, get them to bed happy and then try to spend some quality time with, with my wife and uh, eat eat well watch something on TV and get an early night. That is probably it. Sounds like a good day. It's, uh, there's not that much going on. It's a lot of sort of practical stuff, isn't it? But like, that is kind of what our days are made up of. You know, I'd like to have a day that's more indulgent. Um, You know. Um, yeah, what would an indulgent day look like? I'd just be playing golf all day. Yeah, fair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really would. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's a few things in there I just need to do. Mm. You know, yeah. exercise being one of them. Just like keep you at a good baseline. Yeah. 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 Fair you enough. You don't want to be around me if I haven't um, had the opportunity to exert myself mm. in a gym or running after a ball or walking slowly towards a ball or whatever. <laughs> like Whatever it is, like I am, I've just, I've known that about myself from a very young age that I, um, a lot of people are like that, aren't they? Just, yeah. They need, I sleep better and everything, everything. Um, so yeah but and crucially an early night because you know we're 
getting up to the madness of the kids again every day. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being so generous with your time right. and your thoughts. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thanks very much fun. for I being here. Thank okay. You. Good. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for listening to the Restorative Force podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and review and share it with a friend. You can follow us at Rain Wellbeing on Instagram and at TikTok. Thanks so much and see you next time.